Perfect. Welcome everybody to the public health certificate information session. We're happy to have you this afternoon. We're going to get started in just a few moments as we wait for more people to join. Um, a few disclaimers before we get started. This is a webinar based Zoom, so you won't be able to come off mute or show your cameras. Um, so we highly encourage you all to use the chat function for any questions or comments that you may have throughout the presentation. Uh, we will have a dedicated Q&A time at the end, but please feel free to utilize the chat for any comments that you might have um, throughout. Uh, this is also being recorded and you will see a um, recording in your inboxes tomorrow. It's going to wait a few more minutes and then we'll go ahead and get started. Let's just go ahead and get started. All right, so we're going to start with some introductions. Um, so welcome. We're super happy to have you here today with us. Uh, my name is Jem Doan. I am the program manager for the Public Health Certificate. Uh, today I am joined by my colleagues, Dr. Gonsalves. Would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, hi everyone. I'm Dr. Marcella Gonsalves, and I am faculty with the Public Health Certificate. I'm also faculty with the UC Davis Department of Public Health Sciences. I've been with the department for almost six years now. And so thank you so much for joining us today. Christy. Thank you so much uh, for joining today. I am Christy Craig. I'm an enrollment coach with UC Davis Continuing Professional Education, and I will be able to answer any additional questions you have about the application process and the program at the conclusion of the information session. Thank you. Great. Thank you both. Um, Kirsten Mihaus is our health sciences director who couldn't be here today, um, but that is her role at our organization. So welcome. Um, we're happy to have you. All right, so um, here is our agenda for, day, for today. Uh, we're gonna go through an overview of the program in a little bit more detail, uh, going into program structure, uh, career possibilities, and audience that we hope to serve with this certificate, how to get started in terms of enrolling, finances, and then again, end with a dedicated Q&A time. Uh, we also have a couple of polls sprinkled out throughout this presentation to keep you engaged and interactive with us. Um, and we'll get started with our first one here. Where are you logging in from today? Go ahead and get that launched. Are you coming to us locally in the greater Sacramento, Northern California region, uh, maybe the West Coast in general, um, the United States or outside of the United States? Right, let's end that poll and share out results. All right, so it looks like majority is kind of spread out all over the place, West Coast and outside of the United States, uh, along with some of us joining us um, locally. So that's a really great um, bunch of you joining us today, and we're happy to have you and um, joining us with your lunch break um, and spending some time with us. So it's great to have you here today. All right. Uh, so to kick us off, we're going to start with an introduction video from Dr. Brad Pollack. He is the chair of the Department of Public Health Sciences at UC Davis. Hi, everyone. I'm Brad Pollack. I'm the chairman of the Department of Public Health Sciences at UC Davis. I'm a professor and a cancer epidemiologist. I'm also a public health educator. There's been a surging demand for public health services as we transition out of the COVID-19 pandemic. The pandemic highlighted the growing need for public health professionals. And right now, we only have about a fifth of the public health workforce needed in this country. In addition to COVID and other emerging infectious diseases, there are a variety of other health challenges, including those that are related to our aging population, to advancing climate change and environmental impacts, to increasing barriers to accessing uh, health services, and to diseases that are influenced by social, economic, and lifestyle factors. I'd like to explain a little bit about our UC Davis Public Health Certificate Program. We have a one-year part-time program that's been designed for working health professionals. The goal of the certificate is to increase the skills and knowledge of current and future public health professionals. 
For those who will not pursue advanced graduate degrees, our courses will increase your expertise in public health. They provide a bridge to public health related master's degrees. To briefly explain what you get out of our program and where it can take you, you know, our certificate includes graduate level public health courses that cover the essential areas of public health. And these include epidemiology, biostatistics, the organization of health systems, and social and demographic determinants of health. You will master the competencies required for accredited Master of Public Health degree programs. All of our courses are offered as online asynchronous classes so that you can keep your day job throughout the program. Career options include working in government health agencies, working for health provider organizations, working with community-based organizations, and with additional advanced degrees, they will prepare you for academic jobs at institutions of higher education. For those of you already working, I think the certificate will expand your options for promotion and advancement within your organizations. There are so many career opportunities, it has never been more apparent how essential public health is to address some of our big health challenges and to keep the population healthy. The work we do is important for our communities. It'll be a very long time, I think, before we'll even start approaching the point where we have the needed number of new public health professionals. UC Davis is one of the top ranked public universities in the US, and our public health graduate program is in the top tier. We would really love to have you come and join us for our certificate program. All right, so as Dr. Pollock mentioned, there are a wide variety of careers you can explore upon completion of our program and depending on your experience um, and existing position now. Um, some include a health program manager at the state and county level, um, a health policy analyst, so working to evaluate current and potential policies regarding health and healthcare in your community or organization and looking at its impact. A community program manager, so maybe you are interested in implementing and developing initiatives at the community level, um, working with low income families, minorities, people who have chosen alternative lifestyles to provide that information that they need regarding healthcare services and resources to make decisions about their health and well-being. Um, there's also a health educator or a patient educator, so working to educate people about behaviors that promote wellness and share information about the availability of healthcare services that are available to them. Um, and lastly, a research or data analyst, so collecting and analyzing data for others to make decisions and observations about population health. All right. So now that you've heard from Brad about potential career goals and have seen some of the options that are available to you, what are yours in pursuing the public health certificate? We're going to have that poll launch in just a few seconds. Christy. Okay. I'm having an issue with that. I've been, I, I think I just got it. Launched. Perfect. Thank you. All right, so you, a poll should have just launched. What are your career goals? Um, are you hoping to strengthen your MPH application? So um, go on to get your graduate degree. Uh, maybe you are considering a career change to public health. Maybe you're already in the tech field. Maybe you're in education, kind of want to make the change. Um, are you already working in public health and you're looking to advance your career? Um, and maybe something else entirely. And feel free to share in the chat um, if you're comfortable. All right. So it looks like majority are considering a career change to public health, which is great. This is um, a certificate that really gives you that introduction to all of the foundational skills that you need um, to make that switch. Um, some are also already working in public health and are looking to advance your career um, with this certificate. And that is always a great option um, with our programs um, and something else. And feel free to share in the chat if you're um, open to sharing. All right. So before we get into program structure, let's discuss a little bit about audience. Who is this certificate for? Um, and so we had three main audiences we are hoping to serve um, when creating this certificate. Um, the first one being current public health professionals looking to advance their careers. So we specifically designed this uh, program with working adults in mind. You have other commitments, you're working full time, um, just have 
other things going on in your life that you can't commit to a full-time degree. Uh, because this is a part-time, one class a quarter, um, it really allows you to focus on the content for 10 weeks, engage with the material without having to forfeit your job or other extracurricular activities that you have going on. Um, when we went about creating this certificate, uh, we received input from a diverse group of individuals who served as our, as our advisory board. Um, they were all very mindful and intentional about the classes that they would like to see, um, the modality that these courses would be offered in, um, and they range coming from private and public sector um, in terms of um, organizations that they're coming from. So we had individuals from Yolo County Department of Public Health, uh, the California Department of Public Health, La Familia Counseling Center, and Communicare, a federally qualified health center. So uh, a bit of variety there in terms of input and um, discussion when creating the certificate. Uh, so with the skills learned in epidemiology, social and behavioral health, population health, um, you'll definitely be able to do your job better and help lead your communities and teams if you're at a higher level at your position. All right, the second audience that we considered were career changers who want to explore a future in public health. Um, again, maybe you can't commit to a full-time degree just yet. You wanna be able to see what the curriculum is like, uh, what you'll be learning before making such a big investment. Um, that's definitely understandable and very wise on your part as a learner. So our certificate, again, is designed for working professionals. So it allows you to keep your day job while taking classes with us and does not cost nearly as much as a graduate degree. Um, it also allows you the opportunity to transfer units into the UC Davis MPH program upon acceptance, uh, if you would like to go on further and receive a graduate degree, uh, which is a really great per perk of the program and why we collaborated with the Department of Public Health Sciences on this certificate. Um, so again, our certificate gives you that foundational knowledge you need to jumpstart your career um, and really allow you to connect with the faculty and industry experts of the field, but also peers in your class as well. As we mentioned that um, this also caters to people already working in public health. You get to meet and kind of network with those individuals as well. Um, Dr. Gonzalez, uh, you were once at the point of your life where you made a career change into public health. How was that transition for you? And what did you wish you knew now looking back? Yeah, as somebody who was working full-time in public health, um, who didn't have the training, the formal background in public health. I, I knew I was missing out on something, but I was working full-time and I needed to work full-time. And so I needed a lot of flexibility. So, um, I found a program that was similar in nature, an MPH program, um, where it, there was a lot of online work and it really worked for my, for my career. And I was able to still work full time and go to school and complete those requirements, just like uh, we have for our public health certificate, certificate here. So um, I definitely understand the need for flexibility. Great, thank you for sharing. All right, so our other audience, I'll chime in here, are uh, recent graduates who want to be competitive for our MPH program. And like Jem had mentioned, we created this certificate in partnership with our Department of Public Health Sciences at UC Davis. I, again, am faculty with that department and I've been involved with that development. And what we've essentially done is take taken courses directly from our MPH program and designed them for this online certificate. Um, so the coursework is going to be very similar. And because we're doing that, 12 of the units in the certificate can transfer to the UC Davis MPH. Um, and I will also say that that the courses meet some of our national uh, accreditation competencies for MPH programs that are standard across the United States. So many other MPH programs are credited by the Council on Education for Public Health, meet these accreditation standards. And um, I would say that these courses would probably uh, appeal to those other programs. If you are looking to get into an MPH program and to enroll in an MPH program. And similarly, 
Uh, there are other degree programs that are not in public health where you could likely transfer uh, some of these courses, if not all of these courses, into them because they are usually parts of other programs. So um, just to give you a little more context, too, about our MPH program, our UC Davis MPH program is 56 units and then 40 of uh, those units are core classes. Um, the four that are in our certificate are core classes. Um, and uh, if you want more information, we will copy and paste the link to our MPH program so you can uh, get more information on our website about all the good details because uh, we have a great program at UC Davis, the MPH program. If you're interested, it's ranked one of the top in the nation. And, uh, and we've got some, some fantastic experts and uh, faculty who are part of it. So thanks, Jim. Okay. Great, thank you, Dr. Gonzalez, for that. All right, so now going into program structure. So there are four classes in this certificate, and each course will be 10 weeks long. Uh, because UC Davis is on the quarter system, we operate in the same way. Um, this means that if you are used to a semester system-based school, you'll need to be prepared for how quickly quarter classes can run. All classes are online, asynchronous, with built-in live components that will be optional to the learner. Again, we emphasize this throughout the presentation a lot because we know our audience, um, you are working professionals. We want you to be able to attend our classes um, while um, still having your full-time day job. So um, again, we cater to your schedule so you're able to learn on your own time after hours. Uh, this certificate ranges in how um, it's assessed, meaning you will have a variety of lecture videos, readings, assignments, and exams. So you'll need to be prepared to take on that load each week as you progress. Um, so this is a weekly progression course. So what that means is that, for example, um, the first week that the course starts, um, a set of modules will open up and you have that week to do the lecture uh, videos, watch them, do the readings, do the assignments um, before the next module opens up the next week and everything is due. So you'll progress weekly um, with your assignments and things like that. Um, so while it is a asynchronous course, you still need to keep up with deadlines and due dates of the assignments and exams. Um, this program is designed to be finished in 12 months. So to, again, taking one class a quarter. This is a newer certificate. So as we progress along, we may look into offering the classes more frequently throughout the year. So potentially you could finish faster by doubling up a quarter. However, at the moment it is set to one course a quarter and I'll get into the schedule in just a second. All right, so here's the schedule for the certificate. We're starting in the summer with epidemiology for health professionals, and that is four units. In the fall, we'll have social and behavioral determinants of health, um, and that's three units. In the winter, introductions to health sciences stats, and then in the spring, health services administration for a total of 14 units, again, all online and all asynchronous. All right. Um, so now that you have seen our schedule and the program structure, do you have a sense of your timeline to enroll? Um, are you hoping to enroll immediately in the summer quarter, uh, maybe in the fall quarter, so you're waiting a few months to kind of decide and do a little bit more research uh, within the next year or maybe uh, more long term? This is something that you really need to think about before committing. All right, let's end the poll and share out results. Um, so it looks like majority are in the fall quarter, which is great. I know it's always um, really handy to plan ahead. So that's a really great start to it. Um, some are in the immediate in the, in the summer quarter, which is great. Christy can always help you out with enrollment um, and answering any other questions that don't get answered in here today, um, within the next year and then longer. All right, so we're gonna switch gears now and hand it back over to Dr. Gonzalez, who is going to go over the courses in a little bit more detail and what you'll be learning. Okay, so we will kick things off here by talking about epidemiology for health professionals. Um, this course is set to launch this summer. And 
uh, one of the things that we'll do in this course, I'm not teaching this course, but what our, our faculty will do is define epidemiology, which I think a lot of us have a much better understanding of now, um, having um, gone through this pandemic and seen epidemiologists on the news frequently, um, but uh, but maybe there's some people who uh, still want that definition and need that definition, um, but to, that we'll start with that. And uh, essentially, you're going to get in this course foundational skills and concepts that epidemiologists use to approach health issues. I mean, essentially, our epidemiologists are those disease detectives. They find out what's going on in a population with a, a health issue. And so what's important to know, um, to give more context, is definitely the major causes and trends of death and uh, disability, morbidity in the United States to give that context. But in addition to that, you'll learn about outbreak, invest, outbreak investigations, um, what to do, how epidemiologists approach those, um, including uh, study design when we are investigating diseases and different health issues. How do we go about that given what we want to know, given what's going on? Um, and lastly, there um, you're going to learn the language uh, that epidemiologists use to describe and to assess uh, population's health. In our next course, the Social and Behavioral T Determinants of Health, this is the course that I teach. Um, essentially, we are going to look at the conditions where people are born, live, learn, work, play, pray, worship, age, all of that, because we know that health doesn't just happen in a doctor's office or in a clinician's office. It is the result of very complex systems and very complex factors that shape our health outcomes. And so it's important to understand those systems and those factors as public health professionals or working in public health so that we know where to intervene, where to maintain what we're doing, where we want to change things, and, and to understand the, the context so that we can be way more effective in our work. And just an example, you know, working with a population and knowing the different social conditions and how they're influencing their health outcomes better informed me as a public health program planner on how to work with that population. I'm working in a, if I was working in a community in South Sacramento that has a lot of um, uh, violence in the neighborhood, low income uh, uh, residents, I know I have that context of the, these conditions and how to better approach them. So that is our social and behavioral determinants of health course. Our next course, thank you. I'm not advancing the slides, someone else is. So thank you for doing that, um, is our introduction to health science statistics. This is the math um, behind public health. I like to say just to, to, um, to put it in one word, math. Um, so you're gonna learn about how to take that quantitative data and analyze it. Um, you're going to learn statistical tests. You're gonna learn how to interpret that data. Um, you know, what's a p-value? How do we use it? How, what does it tell us? Um, what are the in interquartile ranges? Uh, all of those good things. Um, maybe you took a stats course before, a general stats course, but this is specifically looking at health statistics. And so, um, so this is, really important. Uh, I know for me, it's very important as a public health professional and program planner to understand the data that our biostatisticians and our epidemiologists are reporting out. And last slide here, uh, health services administration. So uh, the health services, healthcare is a very important component of our public health system. And you will learn all about healthcare in the United States to have that context as well as our public health system. And, and in doing so, you're gonna learn about how it's organized and the different components and the major players in it. Um, in addition, the legal and ethical basis for public health and health services in the US. So, to, so you can get that context um, because we know that uh, healthcare influences a lot of public health. It's an important component. Um, and especially I'll say for me as a public health uh, uh, program planner, um, it is very important for me to understand working with communities 
their access to healthcare, their lack of access, what those resources are, what is Medicaid, what is Medi-Cal, how, how does it work, how does it play into what I'm seeing in a community. Um, and then in addition to that, we are going to cover skills and concepts to lead and manage. So that administration piece of health services administration and those skills, those leadership and management skills could be applied to any, any organization that you work in. So that's an overview of our courses. All right. Thank you, Dr. Gonzalez, for that intro to all of our courses. So now switching gears to how you can succeed and um, prepare for that um, for these courses, we do have recommended prereqs um, for the classes in the certificate. Um, so they're not required, but it is recommended that you have prior coursework and statistics. Um, this really gives you a good baseline to work from for epidemiology and also for health sciences stats. As Dr. Gonzalez mentioned, it is the math portion of the course. Um, we do provide uh, statistic resources and also uh, SAS resources on the questionnaire you fill out in order to register for classes. And I'll get into um, that process in just a little bit. Um, familiarity with SAS um, programming is also recommended. Uh, you will touch on this in health sciences stats. So again, having this background is helpful, but again, not required. Um, if you have experience with other programming languages, such as RStudio or R, it's also very similar. So again, very, very helpful um, there. Um, and lastly, a bachelor's degree and English proficiency. So these are graduate level courses. So understanding that they will be held to a certain rigor will be expected. All right, so going into finances a little bit. Um, so in terms of course fees, the entire certificate uh, which is our fast track option. Um, if you sign up for all of the classes, um, you get a discount of $1,000. Um, but if you go the per class method, um, you pay um, $24.99 for all cl um, per class as you progress along. So it's pay as you go um, for a total of $9,996, um, as opposed to if you did it the full way um, and paid for all of your classes up front, you would get $1,000 off. Um, there are textbooks and course materials that may be additional, and that will be depending on the class. Uh, we do offer some discounts. We do a group discount. Um, if you have three or more people, let's say in your organization who want to take a course in this certificate and would like to sign up all together, you will receive a 10% discount per enrollment. Um, and again, that discount again for signing up for all of the certificate at once and only one discount can be applied. You can also talk to Christy and set up an appointment and she can go over a little bit more detail about um, your specific situation and if um, you can um, see if there are more discounts that are available to you. Um, and other options, we also have an employer letter that we can provide if you're hoping to have your employer pay for your education and um, your time in the program, we can provide that for you to provide to your employer. Um, we also have launched a build your own scholarship at CPE. Um, we'll put a link in the chat so you can find a little bit more information there, but you can essentially apply um, for funding for um, a specific program that you would like to attend, specifically the public health certificate. Um, applications are due um, at the end of May. Um, and even if you're planning to apply or take a class in the fall, you can apply for this scholarship and use those funds towards the fall. So it doesn't have to be immediate. So um, Chrissy can provide a little bit more information if you set up a, an appointment with her. All right, so how can you get started? So there is a pre-screening questionnaire that you need to fill out before signing up for your first class. Um, this pre-screening questionnaire is completely free of charge. Um, it's really there just to make sure that you're understanding the rigor of the certificate and that you know all of the expectations that come with um, participating in uh, graduate level courses um, in the certificate. Um, on that questionnaire, you will also receive access to a statistic resource guide and a SAS programming guide um, to get you a little bit more familiar and in that mindset there. Um, and again, for your charge, you just have to fill it out and you'll receive an email from me afterwards um, um, once you're approved um, to enroll and sign up for your first course um, in the certificate. Um, you can also reach out to Christy Craig for any questions. She can walk you through the application uh, itself too if you have a little bit more trouble um, or have um, any additional questions there. All right, so this is our last poll question. What is your next step? You've heard about our program, you've heard about the finances. 
Um, how are you feeling about moving forward? Are you ready to apply? Do you have more questions? Um, do you have um, to do a little bit more research, which is definitely understandable? Um, or is the certificate just not right for you at this time? All right. All right, so it looks like majority of you need to do a little bit more research and that's definitely understandable. There's a lot of commitment um, going into participating in a program like this or a graduate degree. Um, so you have to explore your options and that's definitely understandable. So um, that's definitely fine. And we're gonna go into our Q&A session um, and just right now, um, if you have any, we can put them in the chat and we'll get started on answering some of those. Um, this is also Christy's information. Um, I'm sure she's gonna put it in the chat for easier access, but um, you can make an appointment with her to meet one-on-one -on -one to discuss kind of your options, if this program is a right fit for you, to kind of go into a little bit more detail about um, the program at the um, So here's her email, her phone number, and her calendar link to set up that appointment. All right, so I'm gonna stop share now and then we're just gonna jump into some questions. Feel free to place them in the chat and then we'll go ahead and get started. Christy, was there any questions that came in that we, me or Dr. Gonzalez could answer um, that you couldn't? All everything uh, in the chat has been answered, but please do feel free to make any additional questions or comments, and we can address those live now. Okay. I'm trying to think of more common questions that we see come through. We definitely get a lot of questions about the statistic resources. And again, that can be found on the questionnaire that you fill out uh, completely free. Um, all right, so I see some questions that have come in. If we were to apply for the scholarship, do we need to start classes by summer? Uh, you do not have to start by summer. So um, the application deadline for the scholarship is um, the end of May. And I believe you will find out if you receive the scholarship by no later than June 30th. And our first class starts on June 26th. So the timing is a little off there. So you can apply and then use those funds towards the fall class um, and take it then. All right, can we take individual courses for something specific we need instead of the certificate? Yes, you can always just choose and pick um, specific classes you want to take instead of the entire certificate. So if you just wanna take epidemiology, that's totally fine, you can sign up. Or if you wanna just take social and behavioral determin determinants of health, um, you can do that as well. The certificate isn't um, committing you to anything. You can take individual classes. Any other questions? Um, Christy can go into a little bit more depth about uh, discounts. If you have um, any more questions about that, if you set up an appointment with her, she could figure out um, and work her magic and get um, figure out some details for you regarding some discounts um, for individual classes um, in the program. Any more questions? Um, one thing I think I want to add here is that, you know, it is an ACE, all the courses are asynchronous, um, but there may be some live aspects, synchronous optional live aspects uh, to the courses. And also, um, you know, if you've never done an uh, online course, there's opportunities to interact with your fellow classmates, usually through discussion posts, and there might be some other kind of um, mechanism. And I mention all this because I, we know, and like Jem had mentioned, there's how important it is to have opportunities to network with other public health professionals. Um, a handful of you are from the local area. And so uh, it can be really helpful to network with people in your area or just get to know people in your area. 
um, as well as across the country or in the world in this case, because some of you are joining us from outside of the United States. So I think that's one very helpful kind of um, benefit of, of online learning, of this certificate, um, of just taking additional coursework is that networking piece. And we were very mindful of that and, uh, and, and may have uh, live synchronous session, sessions, but are definitely, we are definitely aware of the importance of that and we'll integrate opportunities to interact with each other within the courses. It's not like just you are by yourself and you just, you know, complete your coursework and you never learn anyone else's name or anything like that. I see other, see the chat's moving. Yeah. <laughs> see what else is in here? <laughs> I saw a question come in. Is there an application fee? If so, could it be waived? So the questionnaire that I mentioned previously, that is completely free of charge and does not commit you to any of the courses in the certificate. It's really just for you to fill out in order to be able to register for your classes. It's just so we know that you're aware of the commitment that it takes to take these graduate level courses. Um, if you decide to do the certificate um, and go through the motions of all of the courses and want to earn like an actual certificate, there is a fee there. Um, and that is to process your certificate and give you your actual document, your certificate um, to be mailed to you. So there is a fee there. But to fill out the questionnaire and receive your stats and your SAS programming guides, um, that is completely free. Um, after finishing the program, for those wanting to change careers, does the program help with connecting you with job opportunities? Um, I definitely would say yes. There is a new program that we have implemented at CPE where we have um, an integration system that allows you to connect with um, something, a very similar platform to LinkedIn. Um, I forget what it's called, if Christy, you know off the top of your head, um, but it's a platform essentially to give you career resources to get you into a job after completing our program. So it pairs you up with um, kind of a job search along with job resources, um, kind of interviewing techniques for your job opportunities as well. Um, so we definitely try to help out as much as possible to get you um, and get you where you want to be. Yeah, and also add just kind of along the lines of what I just mentioned about connecting with other students and having that networking because networking can be so essential to getting a new job or other kinds of opportunities, you know, professional opportunities. Um, and then, um, you know, networking among students, absolutely. And then, you know, we as faculty are happy to talk with you more about connecting you to other resources. I mean, like Jem had mentioned, we worked with the California Department of Public Health to um, develop this certificate. And I know they are hiring like crazy. And so, um, and they're always, they're always asking me, our contact is always, you know, asking me like, can you send more people our way? <laughs> so um, I, that's something I'm, I'm happy to do. And I'm sure other faculty can do the same. Definitely. Um, Corona, I see your message in the chat. Um, go ahead and reach out to me. I'll put my email in the chat for you. Um, and then we can follow up directly since your situation is a little bit more specific. Um, and we can go over that in a little bit more detail instead of over a webinar. Is there an associated clinical hours for the certificate? There is not. We don't provide any clinical hours or um, any of that um, for this certificate. Yeah, and th that's not required in any of the courses. Right. Um, another thing that I would like to mention is that our certificate also prepares you for this uh, certified in public health exam. Um, so after you complete this program, and if you have public health experience already, you're able to sit for the California Department, or no, Cal Certified in Public Health exam, yeah. um, and it's a board certified exam. Dr. Gonzalez can go into a little bit more detail about yeah. the, the exam. Uh, it's, um, so you do need a little public health experience, um, but it's the National Board Public Health Examiners, and, you know, it, it's really that mark, those initials after your name, uh, the CPH, if you've ever seen that, that that shows everybody, tells everybody that you know public health. 
Um, so, so that's a really great benefit of the certificate is if you have that experience, you can sit for it. Plus the certificate, certificate plus the experience. Yeah. Double perks. Yeah. Here's the website for that exam. If you want a little bit more context for it. It's, it's tough, by the way. <laughs> I'll just say that even working in public health and studying public health, like it's something that you definitely have to prepare for and study for. Um, but, uh, but it's so rewarding when you pass it. Yeah. All right. Any other questions before we sign off here today? Is the certificate a one-time test? So um, I think there's a little bit of confusion there. So um, our certificate are just classes. And so you'll go through the motions of taking each class. And in that class, they might have exams, quizzes that you'll be tested on specific to that class. So epidemiology will test on epidemiology concepts and content um, and so forth. Um, but this exam in particular, the certified in public health exam, um, is something that you take after our certificate. It's not required or anything. It's just a perk that you can sit for. And if you pass, um, you become certified in public health and you are able to receive that certification there. So um, two separate things, um, Suzanne. Um, Dr. Gonsalves, do you have? Yeah, I'll answer that. So, um, as far as I know, <laughs> what they what they tell me every once in a while, I'll get an email from the National Board of Public Health Examiners saying that uh, you need to submit your, you have to do continuing education or the equivalent. So going to conferences or doing other kinds of like courses, or they have this whole long list of activities that will um, count towards your continuing development and education. Um, so that that is the requirement. I, I, I believe it still is. I haven't checked it in a while. I've had my certification now for a long time, many, many years, like over 10 years. Um, but uh, but uh, I haven't had to take the exam again. So I'm pretty sure that I don't have to take it again. <laughs> <laughs> I don't right. want to take it again. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, I think on the website, Suzanne, there is a tab that says stay certified. So if you click on that, I think it shows you what you can do in order to um, stay um, certified in public health. Mm. Ah, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. I think the website mm -hmm. can provide a little bit more context there, a little bit more detail. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. You get you get the personal account from me, but go to the website. <laughs> <laughs> right. All right. Any other questions? Again, feel free to message me or Christy. She put her information in the chat and put my email one more time. You can always email me as well regarding any questions regarding the certificate or anything related. Um, uh, we look forward to having you hopefully um, in the fall or in the summer. Um, and again, this will be recorded and sent out to your um, inboxes tomorrow for your review. So thank you for joining us today. Thanks, everyone.